A great power is a country that has accumulated or simply possesses a, a critical mass of capacity, economic above all, but economic then often translates into military, diplomatic, and other forms. And essentially at any moment in history, one can usually pinpoint several countries that have achieved something of a critical mass. There is great power rivalry. There's also great power cooperation. They coexist in this world. After the Napoleonic Wars, you had the Congress of Vienna, which brought together the principal powers of that era. And even though they, they agreed on some things and disagreed on others, they set up some rules for international relations. Throughout much of the 20th century, the great powers were at loggerheads, and it led to two world wars. Later on in the 20th century, you only had two great powers, and that resulted in four decades of Cold War. We're now at a moment of history when there's only one truly great power, which is the United States. And let me just be clear, even though the United States is great, there's still limits to what the United States can accomplish. And then there's a number of medium-sized powers out there, China, Japan, India, Russia, Europe. But this is a somewhat uncharacteristic moment in history where the United States is, if you will, first among unequals. We're fortunate to live in a world where the United States does not face a great power rival. No one in his right mind would want to live in a world where the United States faced on a day-to-day -day basis a, a great power rival like Nazi Germany or Imperial Japan or the Soviet Union. Indeed, one of the complicated features of this moment of history is unlike the Cold War, when it was easy to identify the principal threat to the United States. In some ways now, it's much more complicated to come up with a way of identifying and more important, assessing the uh, threat. One way to think though about foreign policy and diplomacy is to see that the weight of this balance in great power relations turns out to be more cooperative than combative. If the United States and China, just to take the most obvious pairing, end up as a Cold War akin to the US-Soviet relationship, Neither country will benefit, and I would see it as a real failure of American and Chinese foreign policy and diplomacy. That's one way to think about the, the diplomatic challenge for the century.